So earlier this year, I talked in a video about how I wanted to grow this channel. And we recently hit 10,000 subscribers. Thanks to you guys, thanks to all your support. For those of you that are watching this, just wanna give you a big heartfelt thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot that we've been able to get this far. We've got a long road ahead of us, so we need more people like you to find these videos, to be impacted in their life. And so one of the things that I've wanted to do was collaborate and have more involvement with you in my channel. And so we are going to announce right now in this video, the very first Q&A Monday. I wanna do something that's a little lighter, a little easier into the week, something that's actually gonna give you something tangible that you can walk away with because we get tons and tons of comments on our YouTube channel. And one of the comments that I wanna to talk to you guys about today, which is the topic of this video, is the iPad versus the Wacom Cintiq or the Wacom tablets. And which one should I buy? Our friend ZM, who's a graphic designer, is actually new in graphic design. He doesn't have a ton of money. And so he's looking at which one should he buy. Unfortunately, not everybody can afford to buy one of each. And if you're a creative graphic designer that loves to draw, having a drawing tablet is really, really important. You've seen me talk about this in past videos, like the seven gadgets every graphic designer needs. I actually happen to own both. You probably saw that in that video, but not everybody has that luxury. So what do you decide? How do you decide which one to buy, whether you get the Wacom Cintiq or something like an iPad Pro? That's what today's video is all about. And we're going to help you make that decision. So there are 10 different things that you can look at when it comes to buying an iPad or a Wacom, when it comes to considering which one you're going to buy. And those 10 different things, I wrote them down here, so I wanna give those to you guys. So the first one is understanding the type of display that they are. Understanding the type of display means, is it a mirrored display? So if you plug in a Wacom Cintiq, it goes into your computer with a USB um, or a lightning port, and then you actually have to connect that to power. It has to be powered up. So understanding that one is going to mirror your desktop. So if you're an illustrator, you're basically gonna have a mirror what's on your Wacom Cintiq versus what's on your computer. It's gonna be mirrored versus an iPad. You're actually using an assortment of programs and applications and things like that. There is a mirroring function with the iPad, but it allows you to do both on the iPad. So in that category, the iPad really comes out the winner because it allows you to actually have more versatility in that specific area. The second consideration is understanding that one is very mobile. I can take this thing, I can move it around, I can go anywhere in the world with this. As opposed to a Wacom Cintiq, I actually have to go and plug it in, have it connected to a computer, I have to have my computer. So that makes it a lot more challenging. There's a lot more work involved with a Wacom Cintiq. So if you wanna actually be able to have a mobile laptop lifestyle, you're really gonna to wanna to lean probably more towards the iPad Pro, something that's gonna give you more versatility, more freedom, and more abilities to travel. So this is a big deal and another consideration I want you guys to be thinking about. The third consideration that I want you guys to take with the iPad versus the Wacom Cintiq is understanding the size of these displays. Now you look at the iPad Pro here, this is the biggest one that they make. It's 12.9 inches, which is a great size, uh, but it's also limited in comparison to the Wacom. So this is an area that the Wacom is actually gonna come out stronger because the Wacom Cintiq offers multiple sizes. So the, I think the smallest size is even bigger than the iPad Pro, which is about 16 inches. Then from there it goes to the 21 inch, then it goes to a 24 inch, and then they even have a 32 inch display, which is massive. So if you want a really big display to draw on and you have the money for it, I would definitely encourage you to go the Wacom way. This is not a standalone device like the iPad is standalone. So that was the fourth consideration is making sure that you need a standalone versus a non-standalone. Standalone means it's plugged in versus not plugged in and having to be hooked up to a computer. I can use this completely by itself. So this is something uh, number four and number three that I want you to take in consideration. Now, the next one here is gloss versus matte service. I love drawing on this iPad Pro. I'm starting to get more and more used to it, but there's a big difference between the surface of a Wacom versus the surface of an iPad. You got this nice retina display glass on the iPad and it's really slick and, and smooth, but on the actual, what they call a uh, toothed display, on the toothed version of the display with the Wacom, it's a little softer, it's a matte finish. So it doesn't have that glossiness and you get more of that paper feel than you will on the iPad. So if you like drawing on that more of that paper, the more of that textured feel, you're gonna be wanting to lean more towards the Wacom and especially if you want that bigger size. All right, so the fifth consideration, and this is a big one if you really care about color, is the color accuracy. Now the color gamut, as they call it, has different availabilities from the iPad versus the Wacom. 
the Wacom actually isn't gonna have as high of a color gamut as the, the Retina displayed, you know, really high quality iPad Pro. The iPad Pro has a much bigger color gamut, I think about 115% versus the Wacom, which has about a 96% color gamut. So it definitely lacks in that, but there are, you know, newer and better Wacom Cintiq tablets. And I would just look at the specifications on the ones that you're considering when you're trying to make this decision. The sixth consideration, and this is a really important one as well, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time with the pen in your hand. The pen makes a difference. So if you look at the iPad 2 pencil, which is what this is, I have one nib, right? That's what this little thing is here on the tip. This is called the nib. On the Wacom's, you actually have multiple nibs, multiple styles, and they even have specific ones that are just made for like 3D modeling. So you can't change these on the iPad. You're stuck with this one and this one only. So if you wanna have different nibs, different styles, you are basically limited with the iPad. So you're gonna have more versatility from that standpoint when it comes to the Wacom versus the iPad, but it's something to take into consideration if you're a true artist and you don't wanna be just limited to just this one nib and you wanna have some flexibility, the Wacom's probably gonna be the better way for you to go on that one. Number seven, and this is one that's really important for me because I do a lot of traveling, I'm speaking a lot, I'm going to conferences, I need to be able to take my drawing abilities with me, and I just can't do that with the Wacom, and that's why I never really even use my Wacom anymore, because the iPad has been pretty reliable and pretty good for me, but on the Wacom itself, there's a big weight difference between the two. You're gonna be looking at up to four pounds on a Wacom Cintiq, and at the lowest, basically a couple pounds, and versus the iPad Pro, which is only a pound to a pound and a half. Now, you gotta take in consideration there's some accessories you're gonna be adding onto that. That accessory could be the Magic Keyboard, it could be this keyboard. This is an important piece to it as well, something that you need to be taking into consideration. One of the other things, just as a quick side note, not necessarily a consideration, but something to think about is the tilt. When you get the Magic Keyboard versus like this kind of a little bit more generic keyboard, um, this doesn't have the same tilting abilities as my other devices do. So on my other devices, like my Wacom, I have multiple positions that I can place my Cintiq tablet into, the Wacom Cintiq, versus the iPad, I'm pretty limited. So it just doesn't give me that same flexibility. So the next consideration before we get to our very last, which is very important, is the ease of use and understanding the different uses and the different ease of use of these two different devices. So in terms of the iPad goes, it doesn't really get much easier than that. Everything is right on your, your screen. You have your controls inside your programs that you're using and your apps. Uh, but on a Wacom Cintiq, you have actual controls on the sides of the Wacom Cintiq from zooming in to changing the different pen size to the brush stroke. I mean, everything, you have complete control over it, but there is a learning curve. There's not really much of any learning curve, very little learning curve on the iPad Pro versus the Wacom Cintiq is gonna have a little bit more of a learning curve, but it is more for the genuine true artist. If you're an artist and you just wanna draw all day long and you don't plan on traveling and going anywhere, you're just gonna be sitting at your desk and you want a nice big display, the Wacom is the way to go. If you're a traveler, you need to draw, you need to express yourself, you need to sketch things up, the iPad Pro, is a really good tool for that. So it really just depends. Now, the last consideration and the one that actually initiated me creating this video is the price. You guys are probably wondering, well, what is the difference in price between the two? Now, this is kind of subjective because it just depends on the type of Wacom Cintiq tablet you're going to get. Uh, whether you're just getting a small one like the 16 inch or you're gonna get a big one like the 32 inch, those prices can be very varied. So I'm gonna try to compare them uh, very similarly. So if you look at the 16 inch versus the 12.9, you're gonna be looking at a price tag on the iPad about $1,100, so it's pretty pricey. The iPad is a lot more because it's not just only for drawing, it allows you to do a lot more than that versus the Wacom is simply just a display that is made for drawing. So being able to compare apples to oranges is really important. So understanding that you need to actually have a price that actually fits your budget is also gonna help you with that consideration. You can get a smaller tablet, but it's really gonna be the small, smaller you get, the harder it's gonna be. Now, when you go over to the Wacom Cintiq tablets, you can get those for as cheap as $649, which is a cheap price. So this is really a great place to start if you're a beginner, if you're just trying to take your paper sketches and start doing them digitally. This would be my recommendation to start there. Then as you start to make more money, as you start to generate more revenue, then you can afford to get more versatile and to get a standalone thing like an iPad Pro where you can use it as a computer, as your drawing tablet and a lot more. And now you have both like I do. So these are the things that I want you to consider. These are the 10 things I want you to consider when looking at the iPad Pro versus the Wacom. I hope this helps you guys out. I hope this helps you ZM. 
And I hope to get more comments like this on future videos. If you guys have any questions, you guys have any, anything else you wanna know about the iPad or the Wacom and you're just curious, drop a comment down below. And if you'd like me to make a video or if you have a question for me, also drop a comment down below because I wanna hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made your boy sell. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And as always, keep looking up.